Good morning, good morning, and God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam Lopez. And I'm here for another morning devotional. Amen. We call these the Morning Devos every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And God is God is faithful, man. Um, he woke me up for another day um, to give really another chance for my mind, or another chance for me to decide to serve Him. Amen. Um, by faith. Knowing that he is good and faithful and trustworthy. Knowing that God is an amazing God. Amen. He's a good God. And because of that, it still brings like sadness to my heart to know that there's people out there with broken souls. There's people out there, young people out there that uh, are without dads in the home for whatever reason. It could be incarceration. It could be death. It could be drug abuse. It could be just abandonment. Um, I heard a statement yesterday. Uh, it was dealing with abortion and um, there's a, a new term trending. Um, uh, well, actually, I think it's a lady that wrote a book. She was re- um, she was born through rape, born through rape, amen. But then she lives through Christ, right? So there's no accidents, you know what I mean? Even though it's a it's a violent way to come into the world. If if your mother was raped and you came into this world, I'm going somewhere because we're talking about broken souls. And yet, um, the violence of abortion is just as bad. So, there's broken people, broken souls all around us. And for whatever reason they are broken, um, we need to know that as believers in Christ, we need to be in this conversation. Stop backing up. Stop being afraid. Stop um, trying to be in um, the world's way of thinking come out of there and yes we do have the answer the answer is the Lord Jesus Christ he is the answer to broken souls how do I know how am I 100% sure that that's true because I was once a broken soul and God replaced or repaired that broken soul with his spirit that lives within me do I get everything right all the time absolutely not and I'm not supposed to and if you think I'm supposed to then you're misled But what does happen when you invite the Lord Jesus into your life, what does happen? He fixes the brokenness in your soul. He didn't come to um, save our spirit. He came to save our soul. He didn't come to give good people a better way to live or good people to make them better. He came to give dead people, broken souls, life. And we're going to be talking about that today. Amen. Brother Matthew, God bless you. Good, Good morning. It's good to see you in the morning, Devo. We're going to be in Proverbs 25 and 28. I'm going to read Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. Because I believe those two can go together and give us a perspective, a biblical perspective by way of Holy Spirit God to know that if you're a broken person, you can be repaired. You can be fixed. And it's not through any other man, not through any other woman, not through sex, alcohol, drugs, not through the party life, not through gender issues, identity issues. It's not through preference. It's not not through pronouns. None of that. The only way your broken soul can be fixed is by the Lord Jesus Christ. Getting into a relationship with the one who created you, the one who knows everything about you and everything about me, and get into his situation. Get into a relationship with him. Self-control is a big thing going on. And the lack of it. We can see that all through the news. I I know what's been going on. I just... Um, hesitate to speak out on it quickly because sometimes I have a conspiracy theory mindset and sometimes I don't believe all the news and hopefully you don't believe all the news but what I do believe is that people have broken souls and what I do believe is that people are broken and they need to be repaired and by the love of God amen I think that's the only answer and we have the answer believers stop backing up stop being quiet we do have the answer I know it's not politically correct. I know I could be banned for this, but God is still the answer. Jesus is still the answer. Sister Rachel, God bless you. Long time no see. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you here. Amen. So this is tough for me because uh, I have children, right? And right now, children, it seems like children are being attacked, killed, sprayed with pepper spray, and all these things going on. And I'm like, Lord, what's going on? 
protect my children, protect the children of my brothers and sisters, protect the children of those who have children. Period. Because it's not right. It's not supposed to be this way. That's why it bothers you and it bothers me. No one's supposed to die. No one's supposed to be murdered. No one's supposed to be raped. No one's supposed to be shot up and killed. No one is supposed to be going into school shooting. No one is supposed to be without a dad. No one is supposed to be like that. It's not right. It wasn't supposed to be that way. Right? You're going to say, okay, that's just, you know, instinct. It's not instinct. You know and I know it's not supposed to be this way. So therefore, if it's not supposed to be the way the world is going now, then how it's supposed to be? How can a broken soul be repaired? Well, we're going to try to answer that. The Lord answered it already. The Word of God answers it all every day, every time. Um, but are we realizing how close we are to the answer or how far we are from the answer? That's the question. Each one reach one, right, with this message. Sister Rachel, God bless you. Amen. Miss you as well. Amen. We miss you, um, sister, and um, hopefully you're doing well and your family's doing well and your son is doing well. Amen. And your whole family, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your comment. Proverbs 25 and 28. I go to the Word. You might think, oh, you should go to you know, um, get a psychology degree or you should go and get counsel. You should go to a counselor. I go to the Word first. Yeah, I know I don't get everything right and I know I need counseling in areas of my life. So do you. Everybody does. But I believe the Word of God is the constant. While the world is changing and everybody's moving around the way they're moving in the world, the word remains constant, consistent, truth, absolute, right? So I go to the word. The only stability I have that I know for sure 100% every time I go to it is the word of God. Point blank, period. I don't know no other way. There are other ways of me moving, but I don't move that way anymore. What's up, brother Jerry? God bless you, man. It's good to see you. What's up, man? God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So, Broken Souls. That's the name of this morning's Devo. Amen. And um been dreaming lately, and I, I don't dream at night. I dream awake, if that makes any sense. I'm a daydreamer. But I had a dream the other night about a pit bull um, trying to attack my daughter. And I come to find out um, yesterday uh, that one of my friend's sons was attacked by a pit bull. God is speaking through dreams. He speaks through visions. And um, we just need to stay prayed up. Get ready and stay ready because there's more to come. We're in a spiritual war. Welcome to the spiritual warfare. Amen. Don't forget who you are in Christ, though. Don't forget that we have the victory. Don't forget that we should be in these conversations. When something like a mass shooting or a massacre or something happens like that, we believers in the Lord should be in the conversation. Stop being quiet. We have the, the word of truth coming out of our mouths. We have the answer to life. His name is the Lord Jesus. And it's not about my reputation. It's not about your reputation. It's about God's reputation. If he said it in his word, he's going to do it. If he's the answer, he is. And if he isn't, he isn't. But the problem is a lot of us don't want to test him out. A lot of, a lot of us don't want no parts of Jesus, no parts of the Christian gospel, no part of the church, no part of the body of Christ. They want to do their own thing. And then when something bad happens in the world, they point at us and say, oh, not even your God. Or if your God is so good, why does he allow this to happen? As if they're qualified to even ask the question if they reject the gospel. Why would you want to know about something that you reject? Right? Why would you want to know about God if you don't want to believe in him? Put the blame on him. I did that before I got saved. My dad died when I was only 15 years old, a teenager. I needed my dad. From 15 years old to 30 years old, I was running wild. I was angry at God, someone who I never trusted in, believed in, hoped in, right? I heard about the story of the, the gospel. I heard about the story of Jesus, but I didn't make the relationship. I didn't make the, the connection that he died for me as well. So I was going around. Doing what everybody was doing, right? Sex, drugs, alcohol, fast cars, fast money, fast girls, everything. And then close to age 30 years old, while my wife, my, my wife left me, my life was in a, a spin, spiral, spiraling out of control. I was a broken soul. Even at the age of 30, you know, the, the Twin Towers 
got crashed into, right? Fell down and it snapped me into a place where, oh, wow, that could really happen on our soil. That could really happen to me. And then God started waking me up. And then one day in September, um, I called out to God. I didn't know his name was Jesus. I didn't know he could do anything in my life. I just called him out because I knew I was a broken soul. I was all messed up and I knew I needed to be repaired. We're going to be talking about broken souls today. This is how we're going to do it. Where am I? It goes, how can you recognize a broken soul? Can you spot one when you see one? Are you a broken soul yourself? And is there a way to help a broken soul from hurting someone or hurting themselves? That's why we need to be in this conversation. Analysts analyzing this, professionals talking about this, CNN, NBC, CM, MSBC, all these stations talking about, oh, you know, this person, this, that, and the third, um, you know, the psychology behind this, this, that, and the third. And there's very few conversations with the believers in Christ. Why is that? I'm going to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, this world system is not being run by the Lord Jesus. This world system is being run, ran by the devil. Sam, you crazy. How could you say that? You're going to get banned. Well, it's the gospel truth. But the promise from Jesus says, you will, I will, you will have tribulation in this world. That's a promise from Jesus. I probably won't have a t-shirt saying that, or but that is a promise from Jesus. And you can see it being fulfilled, that promise, right? Tribulation in this world. But he said to a believer, be of good cheer because he's coming and overcome this world already. So we do have the answer of how we could overcome and how we could help repair broken souls. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, if you know people that were involved in these mass shootings, um, these pepper spraying and anything like that, if you know a family member that was affected, if you know someone that was affected by it, we need to be praying for them. Amen. Yesterday in my men's group um, that I'm a part of, I don't run it, I'm a, I'm a participant, we had a moment of silence for all of this, man. Um, because I have children and I'm like, man, I can't imagine waking up Hearing bad news, somebody ran up to my daughter's school and did something crazy like that. I just can't imagine it. Um, it's just tough right now, you know what I mean? Like, we do have the hope of glory. We do have peace in our hearts. We do have peace with God, if you're a believer. But when these things happen, we know for sure it's not supposed to be this way. So therefore, we need to dig into the scriptures. We need to be active in our communities active in politics, active in government, active in schools, active at home, men of God, wake up. We need to be the men that God created us to be, the king, priest, and prophet of our homes. Step up to the plate. We need each other. We can help each other in that situation. Women of God, be the moms that God called you to be. You're either a, a sister or a brother. You're either a daughter or a son of someone. Amen. We all play a part in this. All of us. And we just need to come together, man, and show this world the glory of God, which is living and dwelling within every single believer. Good morning. God bless you as well. So let's see. Before I move forward, I just want to make a quick announcement. and I'm going to put something on the screen. Maybe you can help me out. For those who support the ministry, Soul Winners, Inc., amen, I'm asking of you to help out a young lady, two young ladies um, that are going on a mission trip. They're young, right? And everything looks like it's happening to young people right now. And this little trend that we have going on with these people who have broken souls going and murdering and hurting young kids, right? It seems like that's the trend. Um, Lord, have mercy on our souls, right? Lord, have mercy on those people that are causing all this destruction for whatever reason. But I have two young ladies that are going on a mission trip and they need to raise funds to go. Uh, they're going to Spain, Amen. And uh, pray about it. But if you find it in your heart, uh, I told um, one of the young ladies that I was going to mention this on my Morning Devo and on my radio network and on my social media platforms and to my friends. Um, if you find it in your heart to donate to that, all you have to do is go to that website, um, donate whatever the Lord puts on your heart and just put in the donation. If there's a place to put something, put 
missions. So that way I know to send it directly um, to the young ladies that are going on a missions trip. They're, they're short a couple of dollars, amen. And I know when we get together, we could complete um, and we could satisfy the need. So we could send these young ladies to help other young people in Spain with, and help them share the gospel message. So that when, when they come back, they could testify of the power, the goodness, the faithfulness of God. They could tell their age group the same thing. And that's how the gospel message could be spread as well, through missions trips, missionaries. So there it is on the screen, djsamrock.com forward slash donate. I'll probably mention it again towards the end after I share this out um, to my many friends and the many pages and groups that I'm on on social media. Also, if you're listening, amen, the same thing. Um, On the podcast, details, um, djsamrock.com forward slash donate. It's on there. You just press it, go to the donation page. Um, If there's any issues with the donation page, please reach out to me. Let me know. Um, I have different ways of you um, donating as well. And 100% of this will go to the missions. Two young ladies that are going on mission trips. I'm not at liberty to say their names. So I'll just um, just say two young ladies. Amen. That I know personally. Going on missions. How many young people that you know want to go to other countries preaching the gospel message? It's not a lot. And the few that we do have, praise the Lord. Let's pray for them. Let's continue to support them and inspire them and move them forward in the things that God has for them and help them move forward in victory in Christ. They're identifying themselves with Christ in a world that young people are saying is corny, that's lame, that's you know out of touch, that's um, not real, and they're still believing and trusting and hoping in the Lord Jesus Christ. To me, that's a breakthrough right there. That's a victory right there. So let's pray. And we're going to take a minute to share this out with as many people as you can. At the same time, when we come back, we'll be in Proverbs 25 and 28. So, Father, I thank you for this time. Father God, I pray first and foremost for those who have suffered losses. To those victims and families that have suffered a loss, which so brutally um, died at the hands of a person with a broken soul. Pray, Lord God, peace over our nation, peace over those families. The comfort of the Holy Spirit, God, to be within every single family member that was involved, that lost a child, that lost a loved one, the teachers, Lord God, that lost their lives covering the students. I pray peace be still over all the families right now in Jesus' holy name. You know what it is, Lord God, to lose a child because you sent your own begotten son here to die a sinner's death, yet Jesus was innocent. He was not guilty, yet you know and you knew what to do to repair the broken souls. You sent your very own self in the form of a man named Jesus to help us know who the way, the truth, and the life is. You offer us forgiveness. And I ask, Lord God, that you would help me and help every single believer that I know. Help us to walk in forgiveness as well. I pray your protection over my family, over my children, over my wife, everybody in my household. In the name of Jesus, everybody in my family, my whole bloodline, from the youngest family member to the very oldest. And while I'm praying for my family, I'm also praying for every single family represented right now. That you would do the same for them, Lord God. Protect, guide, and guard us from the evil schemes of the evil one. Come against any demonic influence that's trying to come against any one of those called out ones, the Christian believers that try to wreak havoc in our, havoc in our lives. Come against all those things in the name of Jesus. So I set forth arcing angels, ministering angels, and warring angels to do exactly what they're called to do. The word of God above them, in them, working through them to protect God and guard us. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're leading us into all truth. And we have a victorious entrance going and coming into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. 60 seconds to share this out. Remember... Uh, I'm going to start sharing this out. If you can share this out and repeat what I repeated about the missions trip and reach out to your friends as well, I believe we could get this done. Um, They need some funding to go on this trip. And I'm believing God's going to complete the funding today. Amen. In Jesus' name. So let's go. Let's share. And when we come back, we're going to be in Proverbs 25 and 28. Brother Robert, God bless you, man. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devos. Good to see you, my friend. God bless. Blessings to you as well. 
That's Robbie Newborn in the building. I'll be right back after 60 seconds. seconds down wow that's fast proverbs 25 chapter 25 verse 28 this is the word of god and i believe this is the reason why we see things happening all around us all the time or often a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls a person without self-control remind you of anyone If I'm not controlled by Holy Spirit God, I'm not allowing God to control my life, allowing Him, agreeing with Him, I'm out of control. I don't have any self-control outside of the control that God has placed inside of me, Holy Spirit. What about you? You want to be honest if you have self-control? You ever got cut off on the highway and you have children in your car and you almost got into an accident because somebody cut you off? How much self-control do you have to go up to that person and forgive them, smile at them, you know, wave at them in a nice way, right? The only thing that will control you at that moment is the power of Holy Spirit God. That person might be a broken soul trying to hurt somebody because they're hurt. You heard the term hurt people, hurt people. Angry people are angry people. Sad people are sad people. Miserable people are miserable people. They're identifying with their pain and then allowing that pain, that suffering, that struggle, that lack, that disappointment. They're allowing those things because they have no self-control. They're allowing those things to overcome them and rule them. Do you like to be controlled and ruled by the people that are controlling you at the same time? I don't. The only one I allow to have that to happen is the Holy Spirit God. Because he's not leading me to destruction. He's leading me to truth. He's leading me from glory to glory. So we have the answer, brother and sister in Christ. We have the answer. Speak up. There's broken souls who need to know about this answer. His name is Jesus, the word of God, Yahweh, Elohim, El Shaddai, El Elyon. He's the Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God. He's Jehovah Shammah, the God who is there, the God who is here. He's omnipresent, all-knowing. We have the answer. I know it's not politically correct. Who cares? There's people dying and they need an answer. There's parents right now that don't have children because there's broken souls out there, man. Wake up. What's going on? Like, I know it's not all in our control. I know that. I absolutely know that. Things happen because things are happening. But why are we so silent? Especially in my nation in America, wherever you're listening from, wherever you're watching from, I'm in the United States of America, and I dare say they're the divided states of America, and we're a church, Christian church, not Christianity, not American gospel. I'm talking about the gospel message that's found in the, in the Christian Bible, in the Bible, the words of God. We have the answer, and we're not talking about it. The government, people don't want us in the conversation. Scientists don't want us in the conversation. Politicians don't want us in the conversation because we're going around saying we have the truth. Jesus said he is the truth. So therefore, if Jesus said it and I, and I identify with Jesus, I'm going to repeat what the Lord said. I'm not afraid of that stuff, man. I'm not accepted and I'm not going to fit into this world anyway. So why would I want to be politically correct? Amen. I'm trying to walk this thing out in love. 
If you want to try to walk this thing out of love, we need self-control. We need Holy Spirit God. We can't be a person without self-control. We can't be breaking down walls that are put up for a reason. You ever wonder why there's a fence around people's homes? It's not only for privacy, it's also for protection. Amen? So before you break somebody's wall down or before you try to break somebody's fence down, realize what it's up there for. Why would it's put there for? It's for protection. You know, one day I came home, this was years ago, and my neighbor, my old neighbor, not the neighbor who's living there in every night now, just in case he's watching and his, him and his wife is watching. Not y'all. The neighbor before you, I came home from a long day of work. This was years ago. I was still working for a company. I'm, I'm independent now. Thank you, Jesus, for over five years. But five years ago, you know, I still was working for like a nine to five, struggling, not making no money anyway. That's another thing. Let me stay on point. And they were hauling my fence out. They took down my fence and they put it in the back of a truck. And I got home. I said, yo, what are you doing? That's my fence. Oh, no, that's ours. It's on my, our property. And I was like, bro, that's my fence. What are you doing? We had a property guy come, found out it was our fence. But still, it was taken out. So we had to put up a new fence. And they was going to put a little chicken wire fence that my little dogs could jump over. And they had big dogs. I don't know what the sense of that was. Maybe they did it, they played me, they wanted a new fence, so they said, let's take down his fence, he'll put a new one. So before you break down somebody's fence, try to find out what that fence is there for. Broken souls are broken because there's, they're protecting themselves from something that hurt them. Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. So we see people who have broken souls, no self-control. But look at, listen to this, Galatians 5, 22, 23. But... The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. This is the nine. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control. Where do you need self-control in your life today? I need self-control right now from losing it. Amen. Thank you, Brother Robert, from losing it, man. I can't, I, 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 it's not supposed to, yo, young kids killing other young kids. And then they're, they're analyzing, oh, mental health and all this stuff. Yeah, it could be. Um, but, um, there's that, I, I can't not imagine that that kid was not giving off signs, signals, um, that he was lonely, abandoned, hurt, a broken soul. And I can't imagine there was no churches around them. I'm not blaming the churches around where this young man was that did the shootings. I'm not blaming the churches in my neighborhood, in your neighborhood. I'm just saying there had to be um, signals. You know, kids will call out in the way that they only know to call out. Some cut themselves. Some get into drugs. Some get into alcohol, pre to sex. Some get into gangs. Whatever the situation is, God has set us up strategically in places where we could reach them. We have the answer to their questions. Stop backing up with your answer to the question. I know we believe in an ancient book. Where is it? We believe in an ancient scripture. Ancient, right? Yeah, ancient teachers. Yeah, go ahead, make fun of me. Oh, you still believe in that? Uh-huh, it's so outdated, but it has an eternal word. So go ahead and say it's ancient, but it still has the eternal word, the eternal truth of God. I'm not backing up. You shouldn't back up, my brother and my sister in Christ. Let's show love first, not arrogance. I don't know everything, but I know someone who does know everything. I don't have all the answers, but I do know someone who does have all the answers. I don't have the solutions, but I do know someone who has all the solutions. I'm telling you, it's time. It's our time. In the darkest time of America, in the darkest time in your life, now's the time to shine the light of Jesus Christ, the blazing light of Christ. And quiet lately, man. I'm not talking about church services. There's a lot of those things going on. I'm not talking about conferences, women's conferences, men's conferences. Praise the Lord. Amen. Those things are useful. I'm talking about evangelism. I'm an evangelist, so evangelism all day. Amen. Let's spread the gospel message, the truth. Yeah, people are going to reject what you're saying. They're going to want to argue. They're going to want to laugh at you, make fun of you because you still believe that there is a God in heaven and you still believe that there's a way to enter heaven and there's only one God and only one truth. Yeah. People say, nah, there's many ways to stand a third. 
They have all their reasons, all their so-called facts. But you know, just as well as I know, once God fills you up with his spirit, we're new creatures. We think differently, we act differently, we move differently, and we respond differently. <clears throat> Where do you need self-control in your life today? Not yesterday, today, right now. I know where I need it. Amen. And I'm asking God to help me with my self-control in the area where I know very well where I need it. What about you? So we have a father in heaven who knows what we need and he knows how to guide us to what we need. He knows how to protect us. He knows how to strengthen us. He knows how to give us self-control. We have destructive ways, right? Without Christ, we were living in total destruction. Actually dying in total destruction. We were dying in our sin before Christ. <clears throat> but with Christ, we have self-control over the destructive things in our lives. <clears throat> so we could go ahead and we can ask Jesus today that he would give us self-control for whatever blank. So God, give me self-control for blank. You know what the blank is in your life. I know what the blank is in my life. There's broken souls out there who knows what the blanks are in their lives. We could praise him for his faithfulness. We could give God glory right now, praise, and we could say amen. So we could set forth <clears throat> the gospel. Wow, I'm, I'm closing up. Hold on. <clears throat> God, I look too excited. We could share the gospel with people, whether we know them or not, right? Whether we know if they're broken or not, share the gospel anyway. God is directing, shooting us like arrows into areas, communities, nations with his message because he wants to save souls. He continues to save souls until the day of the Lord when he comes back to bring his church back. I hope you got something out of here. I'm so convicted and convinced at the same time that God through Jesus is the answer. The gospel message is so relevant. Um, The word of God is so relevant to what's going on in our days right now. Something that was written so many years ago is still relevant to this very moment. And yet people are going around saying that we're bugging, that we're tripping, that we don't know what we're talking about. As I mentioned earlier, if you were with me earlier, um, I'm trying to help two missionaries, young women, young ladies, young, they're young, and um, trying to help them get to Spain on a mission trip. If you find it in your heart to help out, go to my donation page. If there's a problem with my donation page, please connect with me, contact me. But the page should be good. Donate and just put missions in your in your notes so I can know to send them directly, the funds directly to them. Amen. Sister Inga, God bless you. Good to see you. Hello, 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 my friend and my sister. Amen. Um, hope you're doing well. Miss you, my sister. And... Um, I'm trying to send people on this missions trip. And I know with the people who helped me in the past and who people who support this ministry now, I know we could get together right now and settle the matter. DJSandrock.com forward slash donate. Put missions in there. Listen, if it's a dollar, it's a dollar more on that or a dollar less that they would need, amen, to get them to Spain. The reason why I'm amped up about two young ladies going to Spain is because they're young and they could be doing anything else in Spain. They could be on going on vacation, but they're going to spread the gospel, amen, to other people their age, younger and older. That's an amazing testimony right there. Um, that brings me um, hope again that the next generation coming up is going to raise the white banner, the flag <coughs> of Jesus. <coughs> and they're going to move powerfully forward. <clears throat> for their generation. I'm losing my voice here. Love you too, my brother, Robbie Newborn. God bless you, man. So I'm out of here. Again, um, I'm trying to send two missionaries, young ladies, to Spain. I'm trying to help them out to get there. So donate, djsamrock.com forward slash donate. Put missions so that way I can send 100% of those donations to them. They kind of need it ASAP, amen. Um, so I'll probably mention this for the rest of the week. Tomorrow as well. Um, I think we could do this. We could get this done. So that way they know that the older generation supports the younger generation. And there's no separation. So that way they don't think that they're abandoned, shipwrecked, and without hope and without a community that believes in them. The older people need to believe in the younger people so that they that way they can know 
that they don't have to be a broken soul. They could feel broken, but they could realize and find out that broken souls that we once were have the hope and glory of Christ and we're sharing it with them so that way God could repair their souls as well, save their souls so they could be recognized in the land of the living, not in the land of the lost, and they could have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So I bless you all. I hope you got something out of this. Read Proverbs chapter 25, the whole chapter for yourself. Um, Ask yourself, where do you need self-control in your life today? If you need self-control, Galatians chapter 5, read that whole chapter. Amen. God has all that for us. And he shows up in our time of need every single time. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.